Welcome to the latest edition of Grade Gains Required Practicals for GCSE Physics. As the usual, all of the instructions for these are downloadable from my web shop. Web address is appearing here. This required practical is all about density. Now we need to remember that density is mass divided by volume. So in order to complete this practical, we're going to need a range of equipment. The practical is divided into three sections. Firstly, the density of regular shaped objects. Secondly, the density of irregular shaped objects. And finally, the density of liquids. So we're going to take this in three stages. We'll treat it as separate experiments. In order to record the information for our regular shaped object, we're going to need a results table, something like this. We will identify the object, we will measure the mass on our top hand balance, we'll then measure the length, width and height. These three things are multiplied together in order to calculate the volume, and then we will calculate the density by doing mass divided by volume. So for our first block, we're going to measure the length, which in this case is 5 centimetres, the width, which in this case is 4 centimetres, and the height of the object, which in this case is 3 centimetres. We're now going to measure the mass of our object, so we place our object onto the top pan balance, making sure that it was zeroed beforehand otherwise we would end up with a zero error and our mass is 175.3 grams. Now a zero error is an error whereby the top pan balance would already be displaying a value in grams even though there is no object on the balance. We then repeat these readings for our different objects. So here we have 4 centimetres by 4 centimetres by 2 centimetres and here we have 2 centimetres by 2 centimetres by 2 centimetres measuring the mass of our other objects we have a mass of 248.9 grams and a mass of 66.9 grams. Now you can calculate the volume of your object by multiplying these three columns together and put your results in there. Now you can check your results against mine and we can now calculate density. In order to calculate the density we use the formula density equals mass divided by volume. Once we have calculated our densities, we can then compare the densities that we have calculated with the densities in the instruction sheet. So we can see that our first object, a density of 2.92, is very close to the density of aluminium, and that is confirmed because this block is a block of aluminium. We can then compare our other densities with the results that we have in the required practical worksheet. Now we move on to measuring the density of an irregular shaped object. In order to do this you're going to need top pan balance, measuring cylinder, an access to some water and a Eureka can. The Eureka can is so called because Eureka in Greek means I've got it and that's what Archimedes shouted when he got into the bath and he noticed that as he got in the water was displaced out of the bath. The amount of water coming out of the bath was equal to his volume. The reason he shouted Eureka was because the king had set him a challenge to try and work out whether his crown was solid gold or whether it was gold plated. And so by measuring the mass and the volume he could work out the density and compare it to the known density of gold. 
The first thing that we need to do is fill our Eureka can to the very, very top. As you can see, water is coming out of the spout. We wait until all of the water has drained out of the spout. We then know that our Eureka can is filled to the maximum that it can be. In order to carry it back to our place, we're going to need to place our finger over the spout to prevent any more liquid coming out. We place our Eureka can on top of a box so that we can get a measuring cylinder underneath the spout to catch the water as it is displaced. But the first thing that we have to do is measure the mass of our object. So we can see here that my rubber bung has a mass of 29.1. We measure it before we put it into the water because once it's got wet we'll also be weighing some of the water as well. In order to measure the volume of our object we place a measuring cylinder under the spout to capture all the water that comes out and we place our object into the water and we can see that water is coming out of the spout filling up the measuring cylinder. You have to wait until the last drop has come out of the spout so that we have the maximum volume of our object. Once we've got the water into our measuring cylinder, we need to put our measuring cylinder onto a flat surface and get our eye line level with the meniscus of the water. At that point, we then need to read from the very bottom of the meniscus, not the top of the meniscus, but the bottom. We can see here that we've got 10 centimeters cubed and we're going up in 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So here we have a volume of 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 centimeters cubed. Now we have our mass of 29.1 grams and our volume of 16 centimeters cubed. We can calculate the density using density is mass divided by volume. We're now going to look at measuring the density of a liquid. In order to do this, you're going to need a measuring cylinder, a beaker, and our old friend, the top pan balance. The first thing that we need to do is measure the mass of our empty beaker. So there we have a mass of 85.4 grams. We're now going to measure out 100 millilitres or 100 centimetres cubed of our solution. This is a salt solution that is water with a certain amount of salt dissolved in it. We want to work out how much salt is in here. So, Don't forget, in order to check that we've got the right amount, we get down level with the um, measuring cylinder and read from the bottom of the meniscus and I can see that I have 100 millilitres of salt solution. I then transfer this into my dry beaker, making sure I get every single last drop. Now I want to measure the mass of my beaker plus 100 ml of water and we now have a mass of 194.9 in order to calculate the mass of the liquid I have to subtract or take away the mass of the empty beaker away from the mass of the beaker plus the liquid so that gives us an answer of 109.5 grams now I know I had 100 centimeters cubed of liquid so in order to work out the density, I need to do mass divided by volume, which gives me a density of 1.095. Now the density of water happens to be 1 gram per centimetre cubed. I can see that the density that I have is bigger than that, so there must be something else in there. Now I'm going to assume that the salt that has been added does not increase the volume of the liquid and then I can calculate how much salt has been added. 
if I subtract my 1 gram per centimetre cubed off the density of the liquid, I can work out that I have got 0 0.095 grams of salt per centimetre cubed. So there we have how to calculate the density of regular, irregular and liquids. Thank you for watching. Don't forget you can subscribe to my channel by clicking the link up here. All the information and resources are available from my web shop, web address appearing right here. Good luck with your GCSEs.